Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel for another video. Today I wanted to sit down and share with you guys some of my best tips on starting off your new homeschool year on the right foot. And I wanna thank Night Zookeeper for sponsoring today's video. I know many of us are getting ready in the next little bit to begin a new homeschool year. And I am also in that same boat. And so I thought it would be worthwhile to sit down and kind of share with you guys just some very practical things that I do, even some things that I don't do, to set myself up to really have a good start to our homeschool year. So. That's what we're gonna be talking about today, just a chatty video, nothing really to see except me sitting here talking to you so you can put in your ear pods, vacuum, do some laundry, get on a treadmill, whatever you need to do, and you will definitely be able to um, gather from what I'm sharing here. So the first thing that I do when we are getting ready to start back to homeschooling is have all of my homeschool prep checklist completed. Uh, that is a free downloadable resource that I created for you guys last summer, just as a way to say thank you. Um, and I shared like my personal prep checklist. I basically took it from the notes section of my iPhone and turned it into a really cute printable. It's free. Um, but I make sure that that is done so that everything is bought, everything is in its place, everything has been cleaned and organized to the best of my abilities, um, and I just make sure that that is complete. It lets me start the school year off feeling relaxed and excited versus like overwhelmed and kind of thrown together and a bunch of um, unmet tasks that I'm still kind of tracking in the back of my mind. So that is the first thing that I do. And if you want to just take a look at it, you can download it for free. I'll link it down below. The second thing that I make sure that I do to start off our homeschool year on a good note is I make sure that I have basically cleared the weekday calendar as much as possible to start back to homeschool. We do not take any time off, no vacations um, that I can like prevent. <laughs> no, like of course life happens, things happen, but in an idealistic world, we are not taking any days off when we start back to our homeschool year. And so I'm going to shoot for not having any orthodontist appointments in the middle of the day. Um, not agreeing to go meet up with a friend or do something else or, um, any of those things, those first few weeks, no matter how long you've been homeschooling, are a time for everyone, you you included, myself included, to be getting back into a routine and rhythm that really is the structure of homeschooling effectively and efficiently. So if I don't lay that foundation and we don't have that dedicated time to start because I've got us overbooked and running from here to there and everywhere, then we are gonna have a very disjointed start to our homeschool year and I do not like that feeling and I know my kids don't like that feeling. So I really try to make sure we have a ton of white space in our days. Really just like nothing going on um, until nighttime when we do extracurriculars. And that's the way I like to start our homeschool year. On that note, this year I actually ran into a bit of a situation and I just wanna share a real life application for this. So initially I wanted to start our school year um, in the beginning of August, around the time frame you guys are seeing this video but I ended up moving our start date all the way till the end of August because my sister-in-law is gonna be having my niece um, somewhere in August and I am going to go stay with their two little boys while she has baby number three. And so even though we could have just taken the days off and it wouldn't have been a big deal um, because we homeschool and we have flexibility and all of that, and that is the way that I would have done it, let's say if she was having the baby in March. But because it was going to be at the beginning of the school year, I just decided we're going to wait until after to start because I just don't want that disruption. Not that a baby being born is a disruption, but you get what I'm saying. I don't want that like 
mix up in the middle of just starting to get everybody back into gear. Okay, so that actually occurred to me this year and so I wanted to share that with you. The third thing that I do to make sure that we start our homeschool year off on the best foot is something very silly and really not necessary at all, but it does bring a little bit of excitement to the first day of school, and that is making sure that everyone has a new back to school outfit and some shoes and everyone is just excited about wearing that. Um, this past week I took all of my kids um, shopping for that and so um, that's just a fun little thing and if you're a homeschooling mom feel free to throw a new back to school outfit in for yourself as well along those same lines which brings me to today's video sponsor is making sure you have all of your homeschooling essentials I think it goes without saying make sure you have your curriculum make sure you have your supplies make sure your pencils are sharpened all that good stuff um, but make sure you have your other homeschooling resources like Night Zookeeper ready to go. If you need to re-sign up for a subscription, if you've never tried it before and you want to have that in your homeschool this year for whatever reason, make sure you've got it all ready to go. So if you guys have not heard about Night Zookeeper, they are an award-winning creative writing and reading platform for kids ages five through 12. And the best part about Night Zookeeper is that they are going to help reinforce and supplement your language arts homeschooling curriculum and your kids will not even know that that is what they are doing. They will not even realize that they are practicing spelling or grammar or sentence structure because they will be having so much fun on Night Zookeeper. Night Zookeeper has tons and tons and tons of games that are all um, age and level appropriate. So it's not like there's only one option if your kids are younger or there's only one option if your kids are older. They get to move through it at their pace and their speed, earning coins that can unlock different features and just having a ton of fun on Night Zookeeper. So we've been using Night Zookeeper in our homeschool for years and years and years and I will have it ready for us to go this year. It is on my homeschool essentials list because on Fridays my youngest daughter takes time off of her language arts curriculum and I just have her do some Night Zookeeper. It's a fun change up for her and a fun change up for me and it serves a lot of purposes in our homeschool. If you are homeschooling a bunch of little kids, you need Night Zookeeper. There's so much benefit to allowing a child to be on Night Zookeeper while you work one-on-one -on -one individually with another child so that they're not bored, they're not causing disruptions, and they're actually learning more and reinforcing what you've already taught them or what you are going to teach them in their lesson that day. So there's just a ton of ways to utilize Night Zookeeper in homeschooling, and I love having resources like this ready for us at the beginning of a school year so that we start off on the right foot. Thanks to Night Zookeeper, I have a great offer to share with you guys. It is a seven day free trial and 50% off your subscription to Night Zookeeper. There is no code needed. The link will be down below and you can take advantage of that significant savings just by clicking that link. I know you will thank me later. Your kids will also thank me later. I always love hearing um, feedback from you guys when you say, oh, we tried Night Zookeeper and my kids absolutely loved it. Um, it is so awesome. So all the information to Night Zookeeper will be down below, but yes, make sure you have all of those homeschool essentials ready to go. The next thing that I do to make sure that we have a great start to our school year is about a week to a week and a half before we start back to school, I start to move bedtime earlier for everyone, me included, and wake up time earlier as well. Um, we, with me having three in high school and one middle schooler next year, um, we just cannot start our school days at 10 a.m. I miss and I relish those days of younger years where we were done with our total school day in about two hours time, but that's not the case for us anymore and that's okay. So we do need to get a good start on the day so that way we're not doing schoolwork until 4 p.m. Nobody wants that not me either. So um, moving everybody's bedtime <laughs> uh, up is helpful. Of course, 
with teens, this can be a little more difficult if they have jobs and they're out of the house and also they just want to stay up later. And so, you know, I have to kind of like ease us back into this a little bit because inevitably every single year, everyone is always very, very tired the first week back to school because of the earlier wake ups and then just like engaging their minds. And the last tip that I have for you to go ahead and set yourself up to succeed for your homeschooling year um, is making sure that you've done somewhat of a little orientation with your kids. So especially if they're utilizing online resources, make sure that they log in, they know how to do their passwords, they know how to uh, locate the lesson, they know basic functions of all the things, make sure that they understand what the expectations are with the other pieces of curriculum, make sure that if you are giving them a checklist or a um, you know, a flow to their school day that they're aware of the order in which you want them to complete things. Uh, arrange those strategically so that, you know, you're not needed in multiple places all at the same time. Uh, I, I had to do that for years when my kids were younger. So just make sure that you've done a familiarization for yourself as well. Um, before you go ahead and just say, all right, back to school. And then they have, they're going to have a ton of questions no matter what, but you will help yourself and them if you go through things a little bit ahead of time. And I think it goes without mentioning, this really should be a very obvious thing, but make sure you've taken time to pray over your school year for yourself. Um, ask the Lord to strengthen you, give you the patience and grace that you need to complete this very important work that you're about to embark on. Ask him for endurance. I'm basically praying for you right now. Um, pray over each of your children that they would receive wisdom from him, um, not just through academics, but developing their character and all those much greater important things and pray for blessings over your school year that you would have wonderful memories made and uh, thank him for our freedoms to be able to homeschool. So those are my tips for starting things off on a good note. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you check out the links to Night Zookeeper. Those will be down below for you guys. Let me know if you have any other questions and I will see you all again really soon. Bye.